Hey, Black Lives Matter. This is Ted Hayes, civil rights activist, homeless activist, coming out of the darkness of the wilderness, bright light. Let us open our eyes. Let's see. Let's see this here. Okay. Today you have these two major parties out here, political parties, seeking to be the president of the United States. Back and forth, the Democrat, Republican, Republican, Democrat. These two groups have been going at it for a long time. And they, they're really going at it now. They say this, this next election, this particular election we're in right now, 2016 election, is going to be the most racist race-oriented election in the history of the United States. And ironically, it's going to happen in 2016. Abraham Lincoln was the 16th president. This is very interesting here, to see the irony of everything. And, and, and they say, though, this is going to be a very racial or racially charged election. And I'm looking forward to it, and so should you. Because why? why should you be looking forward to this racially charged presidential election? Because it's about the matter of black lives in the United States of America. This presidency, this year, will be determined on the matter of black lives and the aftermath of Chattel slavery. Okay, let me show you why. As much as you want to call the Republicans and the conservatives racist. They always throw that mess out there. You say, hey, no to immigration. You was a racist. You say no to Muslims who want to pray in our streets five times a day with loud speakers and block traffic and carry on or use a racist, okay? Or because you criticize the, the colored president in the White House uh, or use a racist. That's all they know. Or use a racist. <laughs> And most people don't even know what racist is, have no idea, they just say it, you know. What gets me is, is, is that when I see white folks or very, 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 very light-skinned, blue-eyed, blonde-haired people uh, like Spaniards call me a racist. I mean, that's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a absurd. But the point I'm making is this. The ones who keep bringing up the race issue are the Democrats. Have you, have you ever wondered about that? Why are the Democrats always bringing up the race issue? Because I'm going to tell you all something. The Democrats are the most racist people in this country. Now, you know that the Democratic Party founded the Ku Klux Klan, funded the Ku Klux Klan, dating back to 1860, early, mid, rather mid-1860s, the Democratic Party. Did you know that, <laughs> that when the party was first started, when the Ku Klux Klan was first started, you either had to be a member of the Democratic Party to be in the Klan, or you had to be, or, you, or, or it really weighed good for you if you were in the Klan to be in the Democratic Party. You see? And, and um, did you know that, um, that, uh, um, the president, Woodrow Wilson, a Democrat, uh, was the first one to show a movie about the heroics of the Ku Klux Klan called The Birth of a Nation in the White House. Did you know that uh, and when Woodrow Wilson was running for president in the turn of the century, somewhere in there, mid-1915, somewhere in there, black folks used to work for the federal government, Right? There's all kinds of jobs we could get because we couldn't get no other jobs. So we, the government let us work for them. And uh, did you know Woodrow Wilson told black folks, I can make your life much better than what it is if you vote for me for president. And because he talked like that, did you know black folks voted for Woodrow Wilson, put him in the White House, and he turned on him? Did you know? You didn't know this, did you? I know you didn't because I didn't know it either. I just learned this by myself two years ago. Did you know the people who held our ancestors as chattel slaves for 245 years was of the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party is the party of chattel slavery, is the party of the aftermath of chattel slavery. Not just chattel slavery in and of itself when it happened for those 245 years, but also the generational aftermath which we are seeing right now. You see these brothers out here walking around with their pants sagging off their butts? That is a consequence of Chattel slavery and Jim Crowism. Follow the trails there. The Democrats, yeah. Did you know it was the Democrats 
who created the Confederacy. It was the Democrats who fought in the war to maintain the, the institution of slavery, the Democrats. It was the Democrats who um, uh, voted against the 13th Amendment that ended slavery. It was the Democrats that uh, fought and voted against the 14th Amendment. It was the Democrats who fought against the, uh, giving black folks the right to vote, the 15th Amendment. It was a Democratic president, named was President Johnson, who, who was the vice president when, when the Democrats assassinated uh, Abraham Lincoln. That's right, the Democrats assassinated Abraham Lincoln. Just like the Democrats assassinated Martin Luther King. Okay? That's the real deal, y'all. That's why the Democrats today are throwing all that, blowing all that smoke in black folks' eyes, saying that they believe in Black Lives Matter. How can Black Lives Matter to a Democrat like Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders when they are giving your national birth certificate away to people who don't belong here? Hey, Black Lives Matter activists, you go to one of Bernie Sanders' uh, rallies and you go to one of Hillary Clinton's rallies and you hold up a sign and you ask her, what about the 14th Amendment? Why are you giving away our birth certificate to people who don't belong here if Black Lives Matter? What's up with that? Then you go to Donald Trump's rally and you say to Mr. Trump, what's up with the birth certificate of black people? And you ask Donald Trump, you demand that Donald Trump explain to himself. You go to his demonstration and you hold up these signs saying... 14th Amendment, Black Lives Matter, and you make Donald Trump and, and, and his new sidekick, uh, the colored guy. What's his name? Um, ben Carson. You make Ben Carson explain that. Because you see, Donald Trump, I could care less about Donald Trump, to be honest with you. He's a rich white guy doing his thing in New York, living dreams. Good for Donald Trump. And I never even saw an episode, of, what's that movie that the, the thing he does? The, um, what's that thing he does? The, the reality show he does, used to do. Ah, come on, you guys. What's that? Come on, help me. What's that reality show? Um, oh, The Apprentice. <laughs> the Apprentice. Yeah, I never saw that mess. But when Donald Trump announced that when he's going to run for president, and he said he was going to fight immigration and build a wall, and he was going to enforce the 14th Amendment as intended, that's when I sat up and said, "Uh oh." What does Donald Trump know about my birth certificate, my people's birthright? What does he know about that? And we've been, tr excuse me, we've been tracking Mr. Trump on this issue, right? Now, Black Lives Matter, being that this is the most important matter to our people, go to Mr. Trump's rallies. So, you know, go to Mr. Trump's rallies, okay? Go, don't go there and try to disrupt, okay? That's not what I'm telling you to do, okay? I don't, I don't, don't do that. I'm just saying you, you go there with big old signs, be creative now, say 14th Amendment, hold that out there, okay? Because... He launched his campaign based on your, my birthright. He's a white guy now. <laughs> launched his presidential campaign on your and my birthright. You see how important the matter of black lives really is in this country? Now, Hillary Clinton and the Democratic Party. Now, remember, this party is the party that held our ancestors as slaves, Jim Crow does. Oh, by the way, the whole welfare thing, you know, the whole welfare thing, 1964 Civil Rights Act, we'll talk about it later. Man, we got bamboos. That's what Malcolm X tried to say. Y'all getting bamboos. We got snatched under socialism. That's why we, that's why we so messed up. That's why we can't find no jobs. That's why our families are busted up, brothers, because the Democrats are the ones who put that 1964 Civil Rights Act on us. Malcolm X used to say, man, these Democrats stick lollipops up y'all butts and <laughs> make y'all happy. It's all y'all need. And that's what the 1964 Civil Rights Act was. It was a lollipop stuck up our butts. Okay? Because we are now paying for that right now. Okay. Democrats. You got, it, was, it, was, it was the Democrats who um, it was, it was the Democrats who, who did this to us. Y'all believe in reparations? Y'all believe in reparations? You may not believe you can get it. But do you believe in it in theory? Okay. Well, why do you say reparations? Because well, reparations mean uh, I want something fixed. I want something repaired. Okay, that's a correct. That's right. You want something repaired. And 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 um um when is, is, did something happen today? No, you want reparations. Why do you want reparations for what? Something happened when? Yesterday in the past. That's what you want reparations for. Well, what happened yesterday? 
in the past to make you want reparations. Hello, chattel slavery, Jim Crow racism. That is why we hurt today. That's why you call for reparations today for what Democrats did to you yesterday. Now remember, right across the aisle, this time came along at the end of chattel slavery, God allowed or ordered the creation of something we know as the Republican Party. And the Republican Party, the Republicans, in 1854 and in 1856, they are the ones who came together specifically with one purpose in mind, and that was to end chattel slavery. And part two of that was to ensure that the free chattel slaves and their descended children, as long as this nation shall exist, will and must experience a citizenship as is enjoyed by white citizens according to the Constitution. That is all the Republican Party was supposed to do. And they did that. They went to war. They fought. They died. They wrote the 13th Amendment. They wrote the 14th Amendment and the 15th Amendment, the Civil Rights Act of 1866. They wrote all the anti-Democrat Ku Klux Klan laws. The Republicans. Essentially, my brothers, Sisters, children, the civil rights legacy does not belong to the descendants of chattel slaves, i.e. black people. The civil rights legacy belongs to the Republicans. They were the abolitionists. Sure, there were a the few of us that got in there. Of course, always we're going to be in the mix somewhere. They're the ones who wrote the laws, fought the war. They are the progenitors, the fathers of the civil rights legacy. They own it. We are the beneficiaries of what they did on our behalf. That's the deal, you see. We are the beneficiaries. But it was the Democrats who did all this, y'all. Now, you go to Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton, and you ask them about the 14th Amendment. I'll tell you somebody else who you go to. You go to the Congressional Black Caucus in Washington, D.C. You go talk to, to our black, you know, there's 43 black congressional members in Washington, D.C., 43. We've never had that many black people in power, but look at the state of our people. You know why? Because they don't know the 14th Amendment right and the power that we have. Go ask them. Also, if y'all happen to see Jesse in the hood somewhere, him and Al, you ask Jesse and Al about the 14th, about Sharpton and Jackson. You ask them. You ask the NAACP president. You ask the SCLC. You ask the Kings. You know, Martin Luther King's children. You ask them about it. You ask the Urban League. You ask, uh, you ask your preacher about it. You ask some of these mega preachers about it. Oh, I got a better. Oh, you got a black congressman from South Carolina, Tim Scott. You ask Tim Scott about that. Oh, and ask me a love about that too. Okay, from from Utah, the black woman, from congresswoman. Oh, ask Barack Hussein Obama about the Fourteenth Amendment. Ask him and ask all of them say, hey, the 14th Amendment, um, do y'all believe the 14th Amendment birthright citizenship should go to uh, people born in this country, even from Africa, uh, come here pregnant or come here and get pregnant and have a baby? Do y'all believe that that baby is a United States citizen, African-American leaders? Do y'all believe that? Ask Louis Farrakhan too while you're at it. And my brothers and sisters, you are going to get the shock of your life. You ever hear about sellouts? Yeah, I used to hear about sellouts. I, I didn't think sellouts really existed. I really didn't. I thought that was just a, a hood, ghetto slang term just to be saying something because it was cool vernacular or something. I don't know. But these people are real sellouts. <laughs> they about they as much of a sellout as the same folks who put our ancestors on them slave ships, man. They care about no black lives. They care about no skin color. They cared about the money and the power and the prestige they would get for selling us like that. And the same thing is going on today, y'all. Them African Americans have the, including the president, have that same old sell us into slavery mentality. 
That's why they all support the 14th Amendment, birthright citizenship, our national birthright to be given to people who don't even belong here. That's the, that's the, that is the dirtiest, low downest thing that anybody can do to anybody, man. Come on. That's what they did to us. Democrats. Okay. Now, I'm going to share something in the next segment. You don't go away. I'm going to share something in the next segment. You're going to like this one. You're going to like this one. It's about the, uh, the Democratic Party apologizing for slavery. What would you say? That's right. I said the Democratic Party apologized for slavery on behalf of the federal government and on behalf of white folks. Mm-hmm. See you next time. This is Ted Hayes, homeless civil rights activist.